this image shot in the canyon country of uh, central Utah is an example of something that I try to do at the end of each summer. You can predict with pretty good uh, certainty that thunderstorms are going to happen in late August, early September over the uh, canyon country of the Four Corners area. And I actually look at um, satellite images on the National Weather Service website, which are animated over a period of six hours, and I try to hit a moving target. You can see where weather systems are moving in. This area happens to be a day and a half drive from my home in Southern California, so I set out trying to be there when this system will come through and catch dramatic effects that happen when a thunderstorm clears. In this case, on the rim of the area called Island in the Sky in Canyonlands National Park, I had spent the afternoon moving along the canyon rim looking for a suitable foreground. And this juniper, which is probably oh, at least 200 years old and has probably been lying here for the last 50 or 60, seemed like a perfect foreground. It had sort of sculptural structure and it, to my mind anyway, symbolized the persistence of things in this harsh desert environment. So I set up there and I waited for the storm to happen, and indeed it did. In this case, I was fortunate. Storm blew right over this scene. I covered the camera and myself with a plastic poncho and waited for the rain to stop. It blew out over the canyon. And then something that I really couldn't have predicted, the sun came below the clouds right at sunset and shafted through. It moved across the scene from right to left, and I had a chance to shoot it four times. The first time, you know, it was just peeking into the picture, second time into the middle, and finally it made it all the way across, exactly to the edge of the scene that I had framed. And uh, by that time I was hyperventilating and I <laughs> exposed the fourth sheet of film. A switch turned off as the sun dropped below the horizon and the scene went completely flat. The reason that um, many people observe that this looks like a painting, and I'm not exactly sure why that is, but uh, that seems to be the response. I think it has a lot to do with a five second exposure, which I had to do to cover the depth of field so that the nearest piece of that juniper trunk is in focus and also the details 75 miles out over the canyon are also in focus. That calls for long exposure, so the rain happening out over the canyon is blurring for five seconds, and I think that gives something of a painterly effect too. And of course everything is wet, which creates sort of a, a, a monochromatic feel to it. I think there's a process of fine-tuning your perception that anybody can do. It's like there's an analogy with music. It's like developing an appreciation for music over thoughtful listening and, and exposure. If you simply spend time in wild places, especially very early, very late in the day or with clearing storms, and um, sit quietly, observe the change of light, I think even feeling the change of temperature on your back and simply listening to sounds, tuning in to that environment, I think with time your, your sensibility increases for the, the values of these wild places, and I think your visual perception begins to see more in, in these environments.